And that is giving the Chaldeans more time to turn and repent. God is specifically bringing them to where the truth is. Bringing the people who are faithful to God back with them so that they have the truth with them. So that there will be no excuse if they choose not to repent. God has done the same for us today. How much light have we been given? And how much of that light do we accept or reject? Behold the proud. This vision is coming. The Chaldeans are coming. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass. These people, their soul is not upright in them. They are an unrighteous people. And they're going to come and bring judgment upon you. And how you are going to stand is that the just shall live by his faith. You may not understand what God is doing. It may look chaotic and be very painful. But in the end, you've got to stay true to God. And you do that by your faith. Church of Laodicea. That church thinks it has great faith. It thinks it's in a right position with God. But yet, what is its true condition? God sees it one way, it sees itself as another way. Is there a biblical example of the qualities of the church of Laodicea in Scripture? And you can find it here in Philippians. Can find it in the life of Paul. Who was Paul? What was his name before Paul? And what was he? He was, which was he? Was he a Sadducee or a Pharisee? He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Okay? In his own eyes, he was blameless. He was righteous. And his zeal for God was like no other. He had it all, baby. He was the man. And how did God see him? God saw him for his true condition. He was poor and wretched and blind and naked. And he had to be knocked off his donkey. Didn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Philippians chapter 3 verses 3 through 11 for we are the circumcision who worship God where? now who is this talking? is this Paul or Saul? Jesus said that there will come a day when you will neither worship on this mountain or that mountain, but you will worship God in spirit and in truth. So who is speaking here? This is Paul. Okay? He's of the circumcision, the true circumcision. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no what? Confidence in the flesh. Here is Saul. Though I might or though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I what? Why? Because I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was from the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of what? Concerning the law, I was a Pharisee. There's no higher standard than the Pharisees. Okay? Concerning zeal, hey, I persecuted the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, what was he? Blameless. How come he wasn't saved if he was blameless concerning the righteousness in the law? He was blameless outwardly. Ricky, what did you say? He was saved in his own mind. Now listen, you're Adventists, you keep the law. You preach the law. You say the law is still binding, yet Paul said that concerning the righteousness in the law, he was blameless, what separates you from him? 
This is the difference between Laodicea, a fallen naked church, and God's people who overcome. You understand this, you'll start to understand the true condition of the church, and hopefully you'll see where you fall in, in your condition between you and God. So, let's keep reading. Concerning zeal persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, he was blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted as loss for who? Christ. You understand? He was self-righteous. What is the problem in the church of Laodicea? They are self-righteous. They see themselves in their own righteousness, not in Christ's righteousness. They think because they have hospitals all over the place, because they have churches all over the place, because they're baptizing 3,000 souls a day all over the world, that they are good and they are righteous. Ouch. There's nothing wrong with those things. God has blessed. But when you look at that as your personal righteousness, now how many of you heard this? Well, I'm a third generation Adventist. <laughs> You can't tell me. What's the difference between that and when the scribes and the Pharisees said to Jesus, we have Abraham as our father, you can't tell me. Do you understand? Amen. Laodicea. Who are you? Who are we? What's the last church? But there will be a people who overcome. Because Laodicea has two meanings. Amen. Two meanings. Second meaning is the people who overcome. Which one are we going to be? So let's continue to read on. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all these things, and yet I count all these things as what? Rubbish. Rubbish. That I may do what? Gain Christ. Gain Christ. Paul understood that there was no work that he could possibly do, no amount of zeal, no amount of heritage, no pedigree that would give him good standing in the sight of God. Amen. Saul, on the other hand, said, it is my pedigree, it is my heritage, it is my zeal that God has to love me. How could he not? Isn't that the blindness yes. of Laodicea? Yes. Isn't that the blindness of legalism? Isn't that the blindness of the Pharisee? Yes. The question is, is have you bought the eye cell that Christ offers so that you're able to see yourself for who you really are in the eyes of Christ? Mm -hmm. Gary? Well, you know, you mentioned our church. Denomination isn't going to save us. It's, nope. it's the personal relationship we have in Christ. Amen. And there's a comment on eight I'd like to read real quick. It's only a couple sentences. Go ahead. In Christ, all fullness dwells. He teaches us to count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus our Lord. The knowledge, this knowledge is the highest science that any man can reach. It is the sum of all true science. Listen. If there's anything you remember this morning, if there's anything you remember out of all the time you come here, remember this. You have to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul would say the same thing about today. All of the, all of the institutions, the churches, everything that we have, that outside of Christ, all that would be rubbish. Amen. And he would count it as rubbish just to know Christ. But listen, God has blessed this church with so much light. And He wants you to accept that light through His Son, Jesus Christ, so that when you accept Christ, all this light can now be used to change your character, to show the world that Christ lives. Amen? Amen. Right? You bring out a point here. When we know Jesus Christ as it is our privilege to know Him, 
gives us a new name. Oh, a new name that only God knows. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. You are a new creation. The old has passed away. Everything is new. Ricky? You can't find the truth by a church, but you can find a church by the truth. Is that, <laughs> that, that right? That is very well said. Now listen, Same don't get me wrong. I'm Hold that thought say it again. I am not telling you that the Adventist church is wrong, <coughs> is doomed. I'm just trying to get you to see the condition of the church. Amen. How does God see us? The same way he saw the Jews before Christ came and when Christ came. They were his chosen people, and yet they did not recognize him. When Christ comes a second time, I want to make sure we recognize him. More than that, that he recognizes us. Ricky, can you say that again? You can't find the truth by a church, but you can find a church by the truth. Very well said. Gary? I, you know, when I said you denomination isn't going to save you, the Laodicean problem is we have all this knowledge. We have so much, but we're not taking advantage of it. We're not serious about it. We're not spending time getting to know Christ like we need to. Amen. Very well said. So, verse 8, Yet I need also count all things lost for the excellence of the what? Knowledge. knowledge. What does that word knowledge mean? Is it, is it the same kind of knowledge that you gain when you go to school? No. No. I don't understand that. You can read the Bible from cover to cover, and if you never understand the Christ that's contained in that Bible, if you never know Him personally, it's going to profit you nothing. You have to know him like you know your mother or your brother or your wife. It has to be a true, intimate relationship. He has to be just as real to you as Ray is to me. Amen. Verse 9. Well, let me finish. The knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all these things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, verse 9, and be found in Him, not having what? My own righteousness, My own righteousness which is from the law. This is that I keep the law so that God will save me. <coughs> I am righteous because I keep the law. Well, I can't keep the law. So hence, I'm not righteous. God can't save me. Why he sent his son Jesus Christ because he paid the debt of your sin and he can change you from the inside. He actually changes your DNA. Amen. 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 You are a new creation. You now, through him, have the opportunity to have victory in your life over sin. Amen. Now, I didn't say sins, I said sin. Amen. Jenny and uh, Carl, you guys gave me those tapes. I'm going to listen to them. It's a bad thing. Because now you want to hear them. Amen. I love it. Pastor Moore said that the problem with the church is we focus on sins, plural. And we need to focus on sin. Amen. Sin. Amen. The wages of sin is death. Amen. When Jesus gives you victory, he gives you victory over sin. Over the condition. Right? And that condition represents every sin that besets you. Amen. Right? Amen. Jesus Amen. gives you power. Do you believe it or do you don't believe it? Amen. If you have no victory in your life, you don't believe it. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, you'll never have that victory. Amen. Can God change you? Amen. Marty, have you been changed by Jesus Christ? Amen. Are you the same person you were 10 years ago? Nope. You're the same person you were 15 years ago? No. Your wife's going, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but you can say the same thing about her too, right? Are you the same as you were before? I'm not the same person I'll be tomorrow either. Amen. And that's what Christ does for you. If you're growing your experience, a daily experience with Him. Amen. Every single day. Every single day. Amen. Because if He's real to you, 
And if you love him, you want to spend time with him, right? Yes. How many of you guys remember in, 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 the, in the cartoon Bambi? There's a point in the cartoon where uh, all of the, the young animals now become teenage animals. And they get this condition called Twitter baby. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Twitter baby. How many of you guys remember the first time you fell in love? You were Twitter baby. <laughs> how much time did you want to spend around that other person? And how much time did they want to spend around you? That's all you thought about. It could almost consume you, right? Oh, yeah. How many of you guys remember when you had teenagers in the hall? And you were on a phone. And they were on the phone to the same person, either their boyfriend or their girlfriend. It's like, didn't you just talk to them? Didn't you just see them in a school? They call them first thing in the morning, they call them before they go to bed at night. Listen, do you feel that same way for Jesus Christ? Doesn't he want you to talk to him the first thing when you wake up and open your eyes? And doesn't he want you to talk to him the last thing before you go to bed? And doesn't he want you to talk to him throughout the day? Twitter page with Christ? Hallelujah. Be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. What was Habakkuk told? The just shall live by what? Faith. Their faith. You cannot please God in your flesh. There is nothing about you and your makeup that will allow you to stand perfect before God. Now, you know I didn't say that there's nothing about you that God likes. God loves you. And God showed that love that while you were still enemies of His, He sent His Son to die for you. God loves you with a love that we can't even fathom. But there is nothing in your flesh. If Christ is not there, that will allow you to stand before Him Amen. in a righteous condition. This is why Paul said, all that stuff I consider as rubbish. <clears throat> because it's only in the knowledge of Christ and knowing Him personally that I can stand before my God. Corey, I don't envy you because you're right, I can move around the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky you're a church that says don't drink caffeine because if I'm coming here drinking caffeine you can never catch me you can stand before God you can stand before God as if you have never sinned before that God looks at you perfect righteous because you have Christ's robe of righteousness around you but you know what <coughs> Not only do you have his robe around you, but you have his character in you. Amen. You express the image of Christ. Amen. We are God's gift to Christ. Amen. 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 I'm, going to, I'm going to get through this verse now. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of what? Resurrection. His resurrection and the fellowship. If you want to know Christ, you better be willing to accept this part here. Because to know Christ is to become a follower and a fellow. How would you say the rest of that? You will know the fellowship of his sufferings. You cannot live your life as a Christian in this world and not experience suffering. Amen. If you're not suffering some way, you better examine yourself to make sure you're truly in Christ. Because the world flows this way, and in Christ you're flowing that way. Amen. And if the world sees you flowing this way and you think you're in Christ, <clears throat> you're in the church of Laodicea. Amen. But if you're going, you're going against that current, then you are Christ. You are Abraham's seed, and you will be a fellow sufferer with him. Amen. That I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to what? His death. To his death. 
if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. <coughs> now, if anybody would have attained, you think it would be Paul, right? Now, Paul in the next verse isn't saying that he hasn't, although he is saying that. You've got to understand what he's talking about. If he was still Saul, he would boast that he has attained. But now he is Paul, and he says very humbly, not that I have attained. But he knows who he trusts. He knows who he's put his faith in. And he knows that on that day, he can trust him to raise him up. Amen. It's a quote in the spirit of prophecy that speaks about the assurance of your salvation that has been abused, misquoted, and given fear to a lot of Adventists. And that is that you should never feel that you are saved. That is no way to live. She understood what Paul meant when he wrote this in Philippians. Not that I have attained. Listen. What is our biggest fault? We are the church of Laodicea. What is our biggest fault? We are self-righteous. Hence why she says you need to be careful about thinking, I'm good. I'm saved. Know who you trust. Realize that Christ is able to save those who have come to him. To the uttermost. But don't put your faith in yourself. Amen. Paul says plainly, don't think too highly of yourselves. Right? Amen. Don't think more of yourselves than you ought to. But think more of the other person. Amen. That's what a new nature does for you. It takes away the self-centered nature that I am number one and I watch out for number one and now it gives me a Christ nature of selflessness that I'm more concerned with you and myself. That's the difference between true followers of Christ and the church of Laodicea. Does that make sense to you guys? Can you give me two more minutes? Sure. Now listen, two more minutes to me is in football time. <laughs> I'm just joking. There's some people when I'm hungry. Do you see how this text in Habakkuk relates to us today? It is as just as contemporary to us today as it was to the people that Habakkuk was supposed to write the vision to? Let's look really quick at Revelation chapter 3. <coughs> Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. You should know this. should be familiar with you, or to you. <laughs> to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor what? Uh -huh. I wish that you, don't you find it interesting that Jesus wishes that you were cold? Well, Instead of being lukewarm? He can work with that. He would rather have you cold yeah. than lukewarm? How do you get something lukewarm? Have the hot and cold together. It's both of them, right? So understand this, that the church of Laodicea has both Hot, something hot, and something cold. And whatever those two things have come together to make it lukewarm. Right? Mm -hmm. Let me find this spot again. Verse 3, or chapter 3, verse 16. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I, I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will, what does the uh, old English say, Ray? Spew. Yeah, and uh, New King James says I will vomit you. Spew is a, a much stronger right. visual. Okay? Listen. The, the church of Laodicea, the church of Laodicea makes God 
nauseous. Don't be that church. Don't be that people. Listen, this letter ends that God says, I correct those whom I love. Actually, it says I chastise. Right? Was that word chastise? Me? Okay? God loves you. God loves the church. But God wants us to wake up and see our real condition and to change. Why hasn't Jesus, Jesus come yet? Because the church is in the lay of the sea condition. Is that right? So if the church is in the lay of the sea condition, does that mean that you and I are part of that problem? Yes. Or are we going to be part of the solution? Both. Hopefully both. <laughs> I leave it up to you because I am not telling you you're one or the other. You have to come to God yourselves and figure out where you're at. But if this is the last church, and you're in that last church, and this is God's church for the last days, then we are the church of Laodicea. Verse 17, because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable. You're poor and you're blind and you're naked. <coughs> but listen, he doesn't leave you there. He doesn't say this is your condition and there's no hope for you. What he says is that you are humans. You are fallen and you've fallen from me. I counsel you, in verse 18, to buy from me. What? Gold. Gold. Refined in the fire that you may be rich. <laughs> and white garments that you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And I want you to anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see your true condition. Verse 19, I love it. As many as I love, I what? I rebuke. I rebuke.